how he behaves when he's in a position to judge people and how yeah. he may respond when he's in a position to hear judgment. So from your perspective, just overall, how do you think he's going to handle having to sit in trial every single day and listen to people talk about him? Well, first of all, Jason, great to see you. I will tell you that I've had to sit through long ceremonies with Donald Trump. I've had to sit next to him during long church services or different policy events. And Donald Trump cannot focus nor can he sit still for very long. In fact, we used to build our events specifically to address his attention deficit. We would break up the events so that he could be stimulated and not fall asleep. We would slide him different information or news articles that he could read while these long proceedings were going on, anything to keep him focused so that he wouldn't just get up and walk out. I think it's going to be very difficult for Donald to sit through eight weeks of these proceedings. Sometimes they're not exciting. Sometimes they're procedural and very right. boring. And as you've heard, he sometimes fall asleep during these uh, sessions. And, and Omarosa, also, I wonder about this. If he starts to hear testimony that he doesn't like or that he's frustrated by or he, he doesn't believe in, is there a chance that he's going to blow up or he's going to blurt out? And, and, and how would his lawyers try to handle that? I would absolutely say is highly likely. Um, you know, during the campaign, one of the things we used to say is let Trump be Trump. Well, the worst place that you can allow Trump to be Trump is in a courtroom because Donald Trump will express himself. If he hears something he doesn't like, he cannot hide it, nor can he control his expressions, his emotions, his outbursts. And so I suspect that he may be held in contempt because he's not going to be able to control himself. One of the things that I, I think a lot of people don't understand about you, and I, I would like them to understand sort of after this segment, is you you have a life now that, that people caught up in reality TV may not see. You're in law school. Uh, you were the first lady of a church. I mean, you, you, you have a different life than what a lot of people think. So I, I want to ask you this as, as a current first lady of a church in Jacksonville who also <laughs> used to work in this White House. Donald Trump is not a man who usually seeks redemption because he doesn't think he's wrong. But in a mm -hmm. case like this, it's important to be able to present yourself, even just as the jury is watching you, as somebody who is penitent. Do you see that in him? I mean, as somebody who worked for him, as somebody who's in the church today, do you think that's something he can pull off? Well, thank you for mentioning the church today is my birth, my husband's birthday, Pastor Newman. So happy birthday. But um, yes, I have sat through church with uh, church services with Donald Trump. I've talked about religion with Donald Trump. Remember two Corinthians. He, he knows nothing about the Bible, but he certainly doesn't know anything about contrition. And you're absolutely right, Jason. Donald Trump has convinced himself by saying it over and over again that he's done nothing wrong in this particular case. And the evidence will speak to whether or not that's true. So the other part about this is these trials aren't just what's going to happen to Donald Trump, but politically, as, as a political scientist, those who are watching the show wonder what the impact of these trials will be on individuals who formerly supported Trump. And that is an era where you have a unique area of expertise. You were somebody who used to work in the Trump White House. You left. You wrote a book. You talked about how it was absolute chaos and a mess. So as somebody who used to be a part of Team Trump, and somebody who worked on African-American outreach in particular, do you think that any of these trials, this trial in New York, which is probably the most salacious, if they result in a conviction, do you think that has an impact on people in Trump world? In particular, do you think African-Americans who supported Trump may be less likely to support him now if this trial results in him being found guilty? Well, let me just take it a little further. Prior to working in the Trump White House, you know I worked in the Clinton White House. Right. I'm now an independent. So the independents are the most important voter block in this election. So the question really is whether the independents will be swayed. And I have to tell you that they will, in fact, be swayed if Donald Trump is found guilty of these charges. Those are the most important folks right now that Donald Trump should be concerned about. And let's just hope for his sake that he can find a way to overcome that messaging when, in fact, he is or if, in fact, he is found guilty. One of the other things, and I, I want to make sure I end with this, because, again, I, I thank you so much for giving this this particular kind of insight. One of the concerns that a lot of people have in this trial is these jurors being worried about their safety, these jurors being worried that, hey, if somebody finds out who I am, the MAGA people will come after me. You, you've seen people in Georgia, you've seen people in various parts of the country come under threat 
by mm -hmm. appearing to stand up against Donald Trump. How real, as someone, again, who has left Trump world and is now an independent, how real yeah. are those concerns? And what should the city of New York or the federal government be doing to keep these people safe as they stand against the former commander in chief? Jason, their concerns are very, very well founded. As somebody who's been on the receiving end of that vitriol from Donald Trump, as someone who's been in litigation with Donald Trump, who's gone through this process for three years with Donald Trump, you should be very, very concerned. Donald Trump will stop at nothing to try to intimidate, to try to scare, to try to dissuade any of these jurors. And so the court and the city of New York needs to take the extreme measures to protect their identity and to protect their safety. It is imperative because Donald will stop at nothing to stop the jurors from doing their jobs. Omarosa Manigault Newman, First Lady of Church in Jacksonville, thank you so much for joining us tonight on The Readout.